The good folks over at Personas just dropped Studio One Six on us. So they gave us an updated start page, new updates to old plugins and some brand new ones, new mixer features like fader flip, different pan modes, track overviews, and track icons, and a brand new video content editor for all of our content creators out there. I've been rocking with Studio One for several years, all the way back to version three, so I can have a pretty objective opinion whether or not this is worth you upgrading, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. What up with you guys, you know who it is. It's your boy, John Mike. I just got through watching the Studio One launch video. Uh, I think it's crazy. I think the new features are dope and we're gonna dig into what's new and I'm gonna try to show you what's new in this and if it's worth you upgrading. So jumping right in, the layout seems new. They've added some bigger icons and some different things here, but here on the start page, some of the greatest features are they have like a way for you to start pinning your songs in a whole pin section. This works when you have like multiple uh, hundred of songs in your list. Uh, I just got this computer not too long ago, so uh, this doesn't don't have many of my projects loaded, but if I had several projects, I could easily get to the ones that I've pinned just by doing this. Under the song section, you can now create folders and such for your songs. You can also create folders under projects and under shows as well. Now, they also added a new artist profile thing where you can add in different artists and have different artists for different uh, sections and different things. It's not a feature that I've used much inside of Studio One, like the artist feature, but it's pretty cool seemingly. Now, probably the most major addition that they've added is this thing called Smart Templates that gives you all of these various templates uh, for doing different things inside of Studio One. But one thing that they showed uh, is really, really cool with mastering where you can actually drag files in and it will go ahead and set up things for you. So let's drag a few files in. Hit uh, OK. It's going to automatically create the mastering template for me and lay out these songs uh, to be able to master them, which is crazy and saves you a little bit of time and they have these features set up to be able to work in other smart templates so they have this kind of workflow set up with your different ones even for rehearsing performing dragging in tracks and doing everything under play now you can set up for uh different uh synths or pianos if you're just trying to lay down ideas really really quickly and really really easily uh even under recording you can set up uh for recording guitar or uh, for a certain recording a full band. And if I hit okay, it will open up and give me uh, all of the different things for that, even a tutorial. That's one of the things that they highlighted during the stream uh, on how to use uh, these templates. And if I open up my mixer, I can see that they've already added in uh, plugins and stuff for recording and gave me some sins and all of those things already set up and ready to kind of go. So since I'm here in the mix, I wanna show you guys some features that are also new here inside of the mixer section. And uh, there's the fader flip mode where I can click in and it gives me a new way to kind of interact with my sins. So for vocal verb, I can see all of the things that are sending to that channel and I can control that as opposed to using this little clunky kind of thing that we've had here for years. But I can also go to my drum room and I can see my sins on the drum room. And every uh, instance where I've got a send at to the drum room, I can now control with faders uh, and I can control multiple faders at one time and be able to do multiple sins. It's just a whole lot better workflow uh, than what we've had up to this point. In addition to faders, they also did some upgrades to the panning. So if I double click on my panning now, I've got like a big size panning thing that kind of works. That's something I always kind of hated because, you know, it was a little bit clunky kind of messing with that little bitty thing, you know, sometimes. But also in, to in addition to that, you've got different pan modes like balance. You've got a dual panner now, kind of like we have in Pro Tools. And you also have a uh, binaural plant panning for like uh, all of those different things like that for panning binaurally which is uh, really, really cool. Something else that's a dope feature they've been needing to add for a while is channel icons. So I could literally go down here, check this box under channel icons, and I get these big, you know, nice channel icons that I can edit, you know, kind of reminds you of Logic. It actually looks, you know, very, 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 very similar to the way it is in Logic, which is kind of crazy. But this is really, really cool because I like channel icons. I think it adds a dimension of visibility to your tracks where you're mixing, where you got big files. And you can jump in real quick and be able to see there's where my snare is, there's my kick, there's my guitars. It's just another visual way of just connecting with your mix. Now, another thing that they added in tracks is this new track overview mode, which kind of gives you uh, just a bird's eye view of the channels and stuff that you've got. You can go into direct plugins. You can 
do uh, those expanding adjustments and stuff inside of here, which is really, really cool. You can see your sins. You got your Q mixes, uh, your panning. It's almost like pulling up a channel strip or pulling up, pulling up the channel inspector inside of the mix, which is a welcome feature as well uh, to add to Studio One. And while we're here with plugins, one of the things that impressed me the most was the new Pro EQ3, which they have added in a dynamic mode, which now allows you to do a dynamic EQ. EQ uh, on here. So now on any band, I can lower the threshold and be able to um, be able to control it dynamically. It's basically like a compressor and an EQ built together on all of your tracks, which is really, really cool. Something that Pro EQ 3 and Pro, Pro EQ 2 has had in for a little while. So they're kind of taking that route and approach to that. But in addition to that, you can also finally solo bands inside of the uh, stock EQ, which makes this even more comparable to, you know, Pro EQ 3 and other plugins like that, like the Slate Infinity EQ and stuff that allow you to do these sort of things. In addition to the new Pro EQ, they finally Finally, finally added in a de into Studio One. I really don't understand why it took this long to get a de inside of Studio One, but that is neither here nor there. We have finally got one and I'm happy uh, that it's finally in there. Speaking of new plugins, they've also finally added in a vocoder uh, into Studio One. So I think this is really, really cool. And they demonstrated some really cool effects that you can do with this on top of it just being a standard vocoder. So I'm interested in playing with this and I'll probably do a video on this later and really dig into it and see what it's all about. Another super, super dope feature that they added in is track preset. So uh, I can actually go to load track preset here and go to a drum set, drum kit, even though I've already got drums in here, I could just go ahead and bring those in. And it packs a folder here with my drums and my kick and my snare. And it gives me all of these settings if I go back to the mixer, uh, just like it did when it initially created that. But I got now those track presets already loaded in. And you can do this with, your, with any of your tracks or any of your things. You can set up your own track presets, which I think is really, really dope and really, really cool feature to add in. Another really dope feature to add in was project customization. So I can actually customize my project for whatever type of project I'm doing, whether I am I need all of the tools available to me, which a lot of times we all don't, or if I am just um, uh, audio editing, editing some audio, it kind of reshapes uh, different things to where I don't even have the instrument browser here. Why? Because I'm editing audio. Uh, you can even uh, create your own customizations uh, and name those and do those things like that. So, so that's a really, really cool feature that I know I'm going to be using uh, quite often as I'm working. Some other dope features that they added in was like lyric tracks where you can actually sync your lyrics to your DAW, to your project, to even the MIDI, which I think is absolutely insane that you can do that now. That's something that no other DAW is offering. And they're finally putting in a focus for content creators, adding them the ability to edit video and sync video to audio and do podcasting and presets and things for that. So overall, I think this is a really, really amazing update. I can't wait to really start utilizing some of these features on uh, my future mix and productions and I'm gonna be doing some video content that's gonna be centered around doing my workflows inside of Studio One maybe even a master class definitely gonna be doing some templates and some project tracks presets and things like that for you guys so uh, make sure that you check it out I got a link down to uh, Personas' website you know you can buy it outright or you can subscribe to Personas Sphere like I do I am a pers dated Personas didn't pay me for this video I haven't beta tested I watched this video just like you guys did I'm a subscriber to Studio Studio One uh, or Persona Sphere, just like a lot of other people, this wasn't sponsored or anything like that. So, uh, and I don't get that's, there's that's not an affiliate link down there either. So I don't get anything if you guys click on that link. If you want to check out some of my other videos that I've done on Studio One, including how I edit, lock, and sync my drums inside of Studio One, check out this video over here. And we'll talk to you guys on the next one. I'm out. Holla at your boy.